hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are well and i hope you guys are staying safe so in today's video from the title i'm sure you can already tell i'm going to be showing you guys how i made this cami top that i'm wearing it's a cow neck top and it's got you know it's a cami top so as you can see it has like really thin straps and then it's got the cow as well so i'm going to be showing you guys how i made the top i'm going to take you from the pattern process all the way to the sewing process and if that sounds like something that you're interested in definitely keep watching however before we go into the video i'm going to go ahead and just do a couple of notes that i wanted to talk about the first thing is to welcome all you beautiful people who are just seeing my face for the first time welcome and welcome to my channel my name is ayatollah the creative director of so unique badani and the content creator of this channel diy with so unique badani and this channel was created just for you to teach you loads of sewing crafts and things that you can do from the comfort of your home so if sewing is your stuff or diy is your stuff you want to definitely subscribe to this channel and all you need to do is hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss out on awesome content that i have for you to all my ogs welcome back you guys know how much i love you guys and i appreciate you guys thank you so much for being a part of this family thank you for your love thank you for your comments thank you for always taking time to do the sweet things i appreciate it and it means a lot to me all right guys now i want to ask you guys you guys don't like giveaway because i like giveaways um i'm currently doing a giveaway to celebrate three years of this channel and i asked you guys to recreate a dress so it's going to be right here i asked you guys to recreate this dress however i haven't gotten any entries yet so i'm go what i'm going to do is i'm going to extend the entry and i'm also going to announce the details again and put it a post in the community tab so in case you're not you know in case you want to find out more details check out the community tab check out my instagram as well all the details will be there and you know make sure you follow the instructions and leave your submission so hopefully i will be able to round this up by the end of may because it was supposed to come up by the end of it was supposed to be two weeks initially and then i extended but looks like you guys didn't get the memo or you guys just don't want free things and you want me to keep my money either way you know whatever i hope you guys actually do enter into the giveaway competition and i hope you guys actually do win it okay guys i also have a sewing class taking place in um it takes place in august i think yes it takes place in august and it's going to be in london it's an in-person class so if you're interested in that definitely check out the details in the description box as well as on my instagram i'm going to have all the details up and if that sounds like something you're interested in i'll have the payment link as well so you can make a payment i've only got limited slots so please don't stall on that all right guys enough chatting let's go into the video and enjoy making your cami top if you do make a cami top of course please tag me on instagram i'd love to see it bye hi guys so to make your cami top you need the following things you need your measuring tape i've got this one that has the inches and centimeters you'd also need your pin and pin cushion or magnet you'd also need your tailor's chalk or fabric marker you need some scissors i've got paper scissors for paper and then fabric scissors for fabric and also i've also got marker so you need a pencil to draft your pattern but for the purpose of this video i'm using a marker so you can see clearly you need your pattern master you'd also need your fabric i've got about one yard of fabric here and of course you need your pattern paper as well so at this point my paper is folded into two i don't know if you can tell the next thing you want to do is you want to draw a baseline and then from the baseline you want to measure the blouse length upwards including one inch for the hemming allowance so i decided to add all my allowance to the pattern in this time at this point so again like i said measure the blouse length upwards and then when you have all the points upwards you want to go ahead and draw another horizontal line so what i have in between the horizontal line will be my blouse length including the one inch for the hemming at the top i'm gonna have the facing so i went ahead to mark facing at the top now starting from the top line you want to go ahead and mark the bust point and then you want to rule a horizontal line and then you also want to mark the waist point and then you want to move a uh, rule a horizontal line so the bust point is the vertical measurement from the shoulder to the bust point and then the waist point is the vertical measurement from the shoulder to your true waist so now i measure all the part i label all the parts i've got the shoulder bust waist and i've also got the length right now you want to mark the ammo and the ammo is typically about two three inches i would say three inches above the bust line so go ahead and mark the ammo and then make um square out with the horizontal line as well label appropriately now after marking the ammo the next thing you want to mark is the chest 
And the most effective way I've found to do this is to measure the half point between the shoulder and the armhole line. However, you could also take it lower if you want it to be lower, but you have to be mindful that if you slow, obviously you're going to have some cleavage showing through. So I went with four and a half inches from the shoulder line and I kind of marked that down. And now I have my chest line, which I squared out vertically. Now that all the points have been squared out vertically, on the shoulder line, you want to mark half the shoulder measurement as well as on the chest line and on the armhole line. One thing to note is that on the chest line, you'll be marking two points. So as you can see, there are two points on the chest line. The first point is half the shoulder measurements, which is what you have on the shoulder and arm all lines. And then you want to go ahead and mark half an inch inward. So you're marking half an inch to the left of the first half mark, right? And what this does is that it makes it a bit less. After marking both points on the chest line, go ahead and mark a quarter of the bust measurement on the bust line and a quarter of the waist measurement plus one inch on the waistline. So for example, if your waist measurement is 40 inches, you want to mark 10 inches plus one, which is a quarter of 40 plus one. On the length line as well, I will say mark a quarter of your hip measurement on the length line. Now that that's done, on the ammo, on the shoulder to ammo line, draw a straight line and then using the half an inch that you marked in was on the chest line go ahead and draw a curve so essentially your curve should be touching the half an inch point and then go back to the shoulder point and ammo line connect the other line so go ahead and connect the ammo line to the bust line with a straight line and then from the bust connect it to the waist point and then from the waist connect it back to the length i don't know if you noticed but for the waist to the length i used a straight line and i used the hip cuff so whatever works for you now i like to do this pit which is basically from the length line mark one and a half inches and then just draw a curve back to the horizontal length line just give the top a bit of a curved hem shape because we're making a kami top, we'll need to reshape the armhole. So from the chest line, go ahead and mark one and a half inches inwards. And then you want to do it from the um, dotted line on the chest, by the way. And then go ahead and reshape the armhole as shown. So after reshaping the armhole, this is what we have at the moment. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and cut this even though we're not quite done. However, before we cut it, I would say add your sewing allowance if that's your cup of tea. So I'm going to be using a sewing allowance of half an inch. And I don't know if you noticed, but I was using like one of my rulers just to make sure that I had half an inch so it's easier to measure and I don't have to keep making dotted lines all through. So mark half an inch all through as much as possible and then go ahead and cut. However, one thing you'll notice is that when I cut, I only cut the hem and the side and I cut the hem because I've added half an inch to the hem already and obviously just like I said, the sides. So with the, with the cuffed hole, I'm also doing half an inch around the armhole so that I have it even and equal. Alright guys, so after cutting this is what I have left and I remember that it's into two. So why I did it into two is I have one for the front piece and one for the back piece because they're going to be slightly different. So go ahead and divide your pieces. However, before you do that, ensure that you've used your tracing wheel to mark where it ends. I forgot to do that initially so I went ahead to grab my tracing wheel and then I traced out the top part. And it's really important to do this because for the back it will be fine. However, remember that we are doing a cow neck so we need to do some slash and spread for the front piece peace all right guys so after making sure that you've traced like the chest part go ahead and then complete your cutting dividing it into the front and back piece so we're going to go ahead and work with the back piece and i know it looks so different now because you know it's missing all the lines however i don't know if you guys can see clearly but i have my tracing wheel lines i'm going to fold it at that point exactly because again like i said we're going to have a facing now it's a bit annoying because the facing doesn't get up to the armhole and i need it to get up to the armhole area but don't worry it's nothing we can't fix so we're going to go ahead and cut off the excess that we have here and we're going to join it with some paper tape or masking tape so that you know it's easy to work with Now that all the masking tape is done and all the facing is done, the next thing to do is to then cut out the facing. So flip it to the side or to the right side, I should say, and then go ahead and cut starting from the armhole area. And like I said, the essence of having the facing is so that we can finish it nice and tidy. 
after cutting the armhole part the next thing to do is to cut out the facing part and for this again i don't know if you can see but it's a bit awkward around some points now determine how long you want the facing in this case i was going with two and a half inches and i was just following the shape of the blouse really so i went ahead to mark two and a half inches all around and i noticed i had an awkward bit so another time face um, masking tape to the rescue so after masking tape all of them like a cheap skip than I am, instead of using just like getting brand new paper, go ahead and cut your facing along the lines that you marked earlier. So like I said, I marked two and a half inches earlier and this is what it looks like when it's folded. So going back to the front as well, we have facing and obviously you guessed right, we are going to be joining as well on the front. But let's go ahead and you know, hold everything down and this is what it looks like at the moment, right? So I went ahead to join here before I realized that I'm actually going to be joining a lot more so level your pattern pieces facing and then obviously we have the main part which is the bust and the waist and that makes the front and then fold along the facing line we should have the tracing wheel max right so after doing that the next thing for us to do is to i'm only folding just to get the marks like solidified now we're going to go ahead and do something called the slash and spread method which is why i said at the end of the day the first thing that i had there was kind of useless because i needed to do the game so for the slash and press spread method some people like to do like straight lines i like to do curved lines but as you can see starting from the um arm o point i went ahead to kind of draw curved lines up onto the bust level so i kind of stopped just right above the bust point and that's how i wanted my cow to look so if you want yours to look deeper you can go for it however at this point it was literally just about touching my bust point so after doing that go ahead and cut all the lines through so as you can see i'm not cutting through the um sewing allowance i'm just cutting just before the actual line and i don't know if you will notice but um at some point i got rid of the sewing allowance because i just wanted to get the most um you know openness with the slash and spread so go ahead and take another piece of paper this time you don't want to be a cheapskate you want to get like a really wide piece of paper and then we're going to go ahead and tape this onto the paper so that we can have you know as much surface area as possible so one key thing when you're slashing and spreading, like I said, is don't cut through the paper, but cut as close as possible as you, are, you can to the end. And as you can see, I cut off the ammo area because I needed to, so I cut off the allowance, right? Just because I needed it to open up as much as possible. And then I placed it on a, pres a fresh piece of paper and then I went ahead to, you know, um late when i was happy with the result so right now this is the spread that i have so using some masking tape i went ahead to secure that in place after laying it flat i was happy with my results so i went ahead to you know take the line from the center front and just extend that line so that i can use it as a guide while making the cow bit so as you can see guide the line from the center front and then extend that also for sometimes in the cow you might have some pieces sticking out that's absolutely fine and you might have some you know that you just completely eradicate that's absolutely fine as well so connect the points as shown so i have a straight line and i have a slant line and then go ahead and bend it over so after bending it over that's how you get your facing and that's why you need like a lot of paper i know like initially it doesn't make sense but you actually genuinely need a lot of paper so at this point mark your half inch around your around your arm o, which is what i've done now i've gone back to mark the half inch around my arm o, and i'm just securing it in place with a paper tape so it doesn't keep moving and then the next bit is for us to shape the um facing bit so this is what the facing bit looks like right now it's a bit wild but we're going to go ahead and um tame it really um so from the bottom bit you want to go ahead and mark your two and a half inches that you need for the facing and we're going to kind of mark that into shape so yeah that's kind of the shape that i went with again at this point you can completely do whatever it is that you want but this is what i decided to go with so now that that's it this is literally the pattern all done you've got the back front piece and you've also got the back piece and as you can see the front piece has a slash and spread up onto the bust area all right guys this is the end of this video if you want to see how we get on sewing it go ahead and subscribe if you haven't and stick around because next week that's the video that is coming out thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was worth it and i hope you enjoyed it see you soon bye Bye.